All right, thanks for watching, and today I will define continuity the cool way, without using any epsilon and deltas and without using any limits. And this is, by the way, the way they've defined continuity in topology. So super, super without any assumptions in some sense. And for this, we have to define the notion of inverse image. So consider a function f, if you want from the real numbers to the real numbers, or even from any metric space to any metric space, then suppose you have a subset of the target, let's call it u, it's useful to figure out how we can go to u using f. And this is precisely the notion of an inverse image. Namely, f inverse of u is just the set of x such that f of x is guaranteed to be in u. So that's the definition, f inverse of u, that is just the set of x such that f of x is in u. And it's very important to understand this does not require f to be invertible at all. And in fact, let's do the following example. Let's take f of x, again, from r to r, to be x squared. And let's try to find f inverse of the integral 4 comma 9. Of 4 comma 9. So again, by definition, that is, again, that is u. Okay? That is x such that f of x is in 4 comma 9. So in other words, it's just the set of x whose square is between 4 and 9. x squared is between 4 and 9. All right, and let's just see picture-wise what this looks like. Maybe here. All right, so this is our parabola. And this is, let's say, the open interval, 4 comma 9, again, without the endpoints. And in particular, x squared is between, uh, is in 4 comma 9, if and only if two things happen. So either x is between minus 3 and minus 2, or x is between 2 and 3. So in other words, it's literally just the interval minus 3 comma minus 2 union the interval 2 comma 3. And now, what is continuity? Notice the following thing here. U is open. It's the open interval 4 comma 9 and also F inverse of U is also open because this is open and this is open. And when's the US open happening? Okay, anyway. <laughs> so the whole thing is open. And in fact, notice here, F inverse of an open set is open. And, this, and in particular, this is not a coincidence because X squared is continuous. And in fact, that is the definition of continuity in topology. So fact, F is continuous. If and only if f inverse u is open whenever u is open. That's it? Yes, that's it. You know, no epsilon deltas, nothing. Super clean in my opinion. And in fact, before I show that this is equivalent to continuity in metric spaces, let me show you why this is awesome. Because let's show, here's a neat application. Uh, namely, suppose you have a function f from a to b and g from b to c, and suppose they're both all continuous, then let's show that the composition, the composition is continuous. So suppose you have f going from a to b and g 
going from B to C, let's show that G composed with F is continuous. So G composed with F is continuous. And it just follows from the following. So proof, okay, suppose U is open. Then let's consider G composed with F inverse. Then G composed with F inverse of U. Well, notice it's the following. We want to show this is open, but if X is in G composed with F inverse of U, that's equivalent to saying G of uh, G composed with F of X is in U, and it's equivalent to showing G of F of X is in U. So G of F of X is in U. So F of X by definition is in G inverse of U, and therefore X is in F inverse of G inverse of U. So the point is, this set is nothing other than F inverse of G inverse of U. Just like your formula for invertible functions. However, here's the awesome thing. First of all, since U is open and G is continuous, U is open and G continuous, what do we know? We know G inverse of U is open just by definition of continuity, but now since G inverse of U is open, so since this is open and F is continuous, this whole thing is open. So since G inverse of U is open and F is continuous, then F inverse of G inverse of U is open. So in particular, this whole thing is open. So G composed with F inverse of U is open, but that just implies that G composed with F is continuous. How cool is that? And in fact, try to show this with the epsilon delta definition of continuity. I have done that. It's, it's messy, but this is again way more elegant. And now, last but not least, let me show that um, the two definitions coincide for metric spaces. So show that they're equivalent. Show that F is continuous if and only if F inverse of U is open for every U. And again, continuous means, you know, there is for our epsilon, there is a delta such that if x is close enough to x naught, then f of x is close enough to f of x naught. So um, proof. So let's first of all do it this way. So um, suppose f is continuous and u is open. And then show f inverse of u is open. All right, but then how do you show a set is open? It means that uh, for every uh, x naught in that set, you want to find some neighborhood that is in that set. So to show, let's say, e is open for every x naught, we need to find some ball, some small, small ball that's contained in that set. So let x naught be in f inverse of u. And what we want to do, we want to find a delta such that the ball centered at x naught and delta is included in that set. However, what do we know? So uh, suppose this is f going from one set to another one. Now we know x naught is in f inverse of u. Meaning that 
f takes f inverse of u and puts it to u. That's just by definition. It's all the points such that f of x is in u. So by definition, f of x naught is in u. But remember, u is open. So u is open, meaning that there is a small ball, let's say of radius epsilon, that's still inside u. So there is there's let's say epsilon such that the ball centered at f of x naught and radius epsilon is in u. All right, but what do we know about um, continuity? So since f is continuous, with that epsilon, there is, is some delta such that if, if you want the distance between x and x naught, is less than delta, then the distance in the output space the distance, just think absolute values if distance confuses you, then f of x and f of x naught is less than epsilon. But then what is that happening? What does that mean? It means that if x is in the ball centered at x naught and radius delta, then if x is in the ball centered at x naught and radius delta, then f of x is in the ball centered at f of x naught and radius epsilon. However, remember that this little ball is included in u. So, what do we know? We know that f of x is included in u, so f of x sorry, is in u. But then that just means that um, x is an f inverse of u. In other words, every x in that ball is an f inverse of u. So in other words, indeed, the ball centered at x naught and radius delta is included in f inverse of u. So, the ball centered at x naught and radius delta is included in f inverse of u, which is just what we wanted to show. We wanted to show that if x naught is in f inverse of u, then a small ball is still contained in f inverse of u. So that was one way, and now let's show the other way. Suppose, suppose now that f has this property, suppose that f inverse of u is open whenever u is open. And let's show that f is continuous. We can show it's continuous at every x naught, for every x naught in your domain. Then, well, just consider the falling open set. Notice that the ball centered at f of x naught and radius epsilon is open. So let epsilon be given. Then u, which is just defined here to be the ball centered at f of x naught and radius epsilon, this ball is open. So that is u. But then by definition, f inverse of u is open. So, f inverse of u is open. So again, we have this ball centered at f of x naught and radius epsilon. 
let's call this u, and then we can just consider f inverse of u. So all the points which map to u, and no moreover, notice x0 is in that set. And x0 is in f inverse of u, so because y, f of x0, well, it is in that ball, uh, ball of center, the f of x0 and epsilon, and that is u. Okay. And now here's the thing. Because x0 is in an open set, we can find a small ball that is still in that set. So there is delta. Is delta such that the ball centered at x0 and radius delta is included in f inverse of u. And I'm claiming that's enough because with that delta, delta if the distance between x and x0 is less than delta, this just implies that x is in that ball, centered x0 and radius delta. So in particular, uh, we know that, so this is in f inverse of u. So x is in f inverse of u. And therefore, f of x is in u. But what is u? It's the ball centered at f of x0 and epsilon. So if an x is in that ball, then f of x is in u. But then that's just a small ball of radius epsilon. So in other words, the distance between f of x and f of x0 is less than epsilon. And that's precisely the definition of continuity. If epsilon is given, which I erased, there is some delta such that if the distance between x and x0 is less than delta, then the distance in the output space is less than epsilon. And then we're done and we can stay home happy. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.